Hey YouTube Slingblade 98 here. This is going to be a brief speech. What would be conjured to your mind, I ask you, if I described the following situation? An entire group of people is singled out and called inferior. They are abused, belittled, and subjugated. Eventually their freedom is expropriated from them as a whole. An aggressive unilateral regime comes to power by exploiting the labor of these captives. They are caged in close quarters, forced to eat their own dead, live amongst the filth and squalor of their ill with no care, and watch as their loved ones are taken away from them forever with no explanation of where they are or if they will ever return. In a lab that few people even know exists, hideous experiments are performed on them in the name of science. They are euthanized if they are in good enough shape to keep working and they are viewed as lesser beings solely because of the way they were born. An entire regime rests its power on the backs of these helpless souls while simultaneously defecating on their basis rights as living, breathing, and sentient beings. This regime reached its zenith by belittling and exploiting. It has houses devoted to the extermination of infidels. It speaks fanatically of how great its members are and how they are God's chosen people. These madmen say that the land of the infidels is theirs for the taking and that since they are the master race, it's okay that they use others as tools since clearly the lesser beings must have been put there by God for their use. Their head is a hateful man who is in reality no different from those that he has devoted his life to killing. He, he is nothing close to his own self-exalting image. In conclusion, this entity and his numerous benefactors set out to dominate the world in the name of a truer form of humanity, but ended up being looked upon by historians as the greatest monsters of our time. Despite the evils that were being blatantly committed, Many stood by and watched as the millions had their lands seized and their lives taken. Many stood by and watched apathetically as their brothers were buried in mass graves and many people were willing to benefit from the suffering of the victimized by simply accepting that those who were tested on provided useful new data and products. Although the majority of people weren't actively participating in these atrocities, they shared the supremacist sentiment somewhere in them and stood by in ignorance. Those victims lucky enough to survive lived in an abbreviated state of agony with physical and mental scars that are beyond our capacity to fathom. They often couldn't walk and had diseases like cancer due to the beatings, close quarters, and chemical testing. You were very likely sure that I was describing the Holocaust. The mad dictator I was describing surely must have been Hitler, and those prosecuted poor souls were either the Jews in Poland or the Romanian gypsies. You likely thought the experiments as being carried out by a mad scientist in a white lab coat, like the angel of death, Joseph Mengel, and the Jews as being the tes testing specimens who were actually dissected, sewn together, turned back into human soap, and um, used to further the Nazi medical trade. Yes, all of that actually happened. The facts are out there if you look them up. The fact is that the Allies seized the Nazi medical records and incorporated some of Mengel or other Nazi doctors' discoveries into the annals of common practice. You probably thought the apathetic response as being that of the Americans taking years to stop this. You probably thought of the grandmothers and little children being shot in the streets of the deformed and mentally ill who were executed in their beds. You aren't wrong. But what would you think of if I told you this is happening today? Not in Darfur, not in the protest rock Middle East under some dictator whose name you can't pronounce, but in America. What if I told you that there wasn't a raving Austrian in a beige stormtrooper suit orgasmically decrying the Jews, but a fair-haired model telling you to use a product that's been tested on animals, or a talking chicken oddly telling you how good he and his relatives taste? What if I told you that supremacy wasn't Nazism, but anthropocentricism. What if there wasn't just an Austrian Jew throwing other Jews under the bus, but an entire planet of cannibals who were willing to readily eat and enslave creatures that had 95% of the same DNA as him? Lab monkeys and pigs both share over 95% of the DNA in humans and were willing to use products that were tested on them, such as shampoos and eat products like sausage, which probably often contain literal human in them. 
Um, what would you do if I told you that you were the unknown, hopefully unknown, benefactor of the genocide and Hitlerian lab tests on an entire singled out group of helpless animals, in your shampoo and in your lunch bag? What if I told you that your religion says man is inherently sinful, but contradictorily looks down on snows at a creature that has no capacity to hate or commit evil? Would you think twice that the Nazi-Jew relationship is no different than the blind consumer lamb Blah, blind consumer lab animal relationship. I'm not saying that you have to go live in a tent and recycle your poop and become vegan. The Native Americans were big meat eaters, a lot of them anyways. But the point is that they respected and loved the animals that they consumed. They used every part. You don't have to give up any part of your life, even if you hunt avidly. Just please think kindly of the sacrifice the animals made for you in the same way that you think of how a soldier who's gone off to war has sacrificed something for his country. Think twice about the true cost of blind, naked, senseless consumerism. That lives are lost when you don't consider a non-human to have a life. You don't have to be a bong hits for Jesus clad granola packing Occupy protester to respect nature and the earth. Thank you. Good night.